The indigenous people of New Zealand, the Māori, were a people on the verge of being transformed from a warring and bloodthirsty people to being almost civilized people who wanted to join the British Empire. But then on the other hand, they weren't really that civilized, which is why they were suffering from being weaker than Europeans in their morality and their capability to sustain bad influences. Therefore, they should have had only limited contact with the Europeans and almost only with missionary workers. These were two views presented of the Māori in the early 19th century London by two different groups of people. And these views and how they were formed are what I'm studying in my PhD thesis. The groups that presented these views were, on the one hand, members of a land company that wanted to expand the British Empire into New Zealand. The other view was presented by humanitarian-minded people, and they believed that expanding the empire into New Zealand would be against the rights and against the well-being of the Māori, which is why they criticized it. Both of these groups were trying to influence the British Parliament on New Zealand's colonization, but as you can see, towards very different outcomes. They were trying to influence the Parliament by uh, relating news and stories about the Māori to London from New Zealand and from people who had visited New Zealand. The groups were active in the work at the same time, and in relating these new, new stories and promoting their own agendas, they created differing knowledges about the Māori. And I mean knowledges in plural, plural, because their views and ideas were drastically different, but they were presented as facts. And although their ideas were different, what is quite strange and even quite shocking is that they even based their sources on even exact same stories and sources from New Zealand. Although they used the same sources, what they did was they picked what bits and pieces they would tell and emphasize in Britain that would promote their own agendas. And in these ways, from the same sources, grew two different knowledges. The news about the Māori were very important because they were used to make crucial decisions about the British Empire. For example, on whether New Zealand should become a part of the empire or not. That's why they were very important, but as the example of these two groups creating different knowledges shows, understanding the process of how the knowledges were formed was extremely important as well. And we should know it very well, because apparently we do live in the world of alternative facts. Thank you.